we present you our grand finale panel discussion. We are about to captivate conclusions and future frontiers. Our next segment will be on charting the course forward with industry associations, a live dialogue on shaping the future of retail. Our next set of speakers are minds and leaders, not only in the fields that they come from, but they are those who have taken their fields forward, have contributed immensely. Who am I talking about? Our next set of speakers right here on stage. Please welcome our moderator, Mr. Saurabh Ashadal, MD, Capital Markets and Head Retail India, Kushman and Wakefield. May I request all of you to please put your hands together for him. First thing in the morning today, he joined us on stage and what better than having him back on for our grand finale. As our speakers for this segment, I'm about to present to you not only industry veterans, but they are examples, examples of those who know not only how to lead the way, but also showcase it. These are names that will bring to you the best success mantras like no one else will. Please put your hands together as we are honored by the very kind presence of Mr. Bijoy Korean, Chairman, Retail Association of India. We are so very glad. All the way from Bengaluru to Mumbai, this is our way of welcoming you, sir. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Let's hear a round of applause for him, please. She's someone who's carved her way into an industry which was earlier known to be an industry not only led by men but also dominated by men. She is a name that has shaken it all. She is a name that has broken all barriers, created not just a space for herself but so many other women. She has won a number of accolades and we know what reasons behind it are. Her effort, her hard work, her dedication. Please welcome Ms. Pushpa Bekter, Chairperson, Shopping Centre Association of India. What a pleasure to have you on stage with us, ma'am. I'd now like to present to you someone who is known to be a mentor for many. He's an inspiration for all of us. Let's hear it up for Mr. Kabir Suri, President, National Restaurant Association of India. Someone who is known to be a voice who not only represents the restaurant industry, but a voice that makes a difference. A round of applause as he joins us on stage, please. Thank you so very much for being here. Let's look forward to this very, very interesting panel discussion with all of y'all. Thank you. So. I've been entrusted with the job of doing the grand finale and making sure still everyone is awake. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, while we all were together and, and discussing just to set the context, I think uh, all of us agree to the fact that, you know, retail industry overall uh, post-COVID has seen a surge. Uh, there were way of working of retail was very different from what it is now. Given the consumption which is growing, uh, we see retail as consumers first, as where we want to experience more than just seeing the brick and mortar. And with the Indian's economy growing, we are becoming slowly, slowly more middle class economy. Uh, this consumption story, experiential retail, consumers' behavior, those are all going into a sea change. And those changes are inevitable. They will happen. And what better way today to talk to the industry stalwarts who are now heads of associations and understand their perspective of, you know, what they are thinking. And I was thinking how to, how to start the conversation and then they helped me <laughs> to think through. And, you know, my first question, what I understood from them, and sorry if it is a little bit controversial, but uh, till now, why you guys have not collaborated? So, these associations being there, and I'm sure there are advantages of that. And uh, 
uh, I, I would like to understand from each of you what are the challenges of being forming together, being collabing together, what are the advantages do you see, what are your expectations from the state governments, from the central government, and, and how do you see the, the, these associations coming together idly, and then obviously the epitome would be everyone coming together and this becoming an industry. Right, that's the, that's the I think the the end goal. So, so from each of your, you know, understanding and and your great experience, uh, anyone can start. I would like to understand. <laughs> Pushpa said, "Don't ask me the first question." <laughs> Ladies first, okay. So, so that's that's what you know for for all of us to understand. You know. Uh, you know you. Put me in a spot, but I'll attempt. Why did we not come in together? The answer is we three were not the chairpersons earlier. That's the answer. <laughs> now that we are, I think we will make this attempt and make sure that um, we do something credible where, you know, all three of us are the highest employment generators. And the three industries are completely correlated. One cannot exist without the other. Which, I mean, I always say the shopping center is like just the hardware. The software is the people sitting on either side, you know. They are the ones who bring the soul, the brands, and um, the energy. So it's only natural that the problems are actually collective. Um, we were just talking earlier also when different problems happen. I think COVID, that, you know, a black swan event got a lot of us together. I remember having multiple sessions at that point in time to see how is it that we can save the industry. So maybe it was a crisis that brought people together, but so be it. Um, there is a lot that we can do uh, collectively, and we can really be a strong voice to be heard by the government. Um, in which, like we were saying, um, coming in from the real estate space, all I can say is that urban planning is the most important thing in a growing e economy. Otherwise, you will just have chaos. So if we have a planned approach with three bodies going in and saying, you know, that particular area, this particular city needs to be planned in this manner, give suggestions, I'm sure they listen because this is a very strong body for them to not, you know, listen to us. I think that's really the start that we need to do on one hand. And on the other hand, really give them a more of a, like Kabir was suggesting, a public-private partnership approach. We, at an individual DLF level, we have tried it very successfully. And I think as industry bodies, if we try it, it will get heard a lot more. Sure, sure. I mean, what's your what's your view on this? And no, I, I completely echo what uh, Pushpa just said. I think, um, you know, as each of our industry is very competitive, uh, the food business in general, I'll speak for the food business to start with, uh, we are constantly competing with each other. And the togetherness, like, again, as Pushpa said, only came through during COVID. Because I think people realize that fighting a war or fighting a battle or not knowing the, everything being unknown, because like she said, it was a black swan event. One did not know what was going to happen. So I think it brought everyone together, right? So that maybe we can find a solution together of how to survive. And I think that is what brought each of us together at that time and consolidated each, I would not speak for retail, but I, I'm assuming retail also came together with the same thought process. And when everyone came together, I think we were able to find that there were solutions available. And there were outcomes that were available in the interest of all concerned parties. Because it was not an outcome just for us or for them or for him. It was for everyone, which was making sure the industry survives, retail survives, F&B survives, infrastructure survives, and life goes on. Today we sit after so many people wrote off brick and mortar restaurant, uh, brick and mortar uh, uh, um, um, stores and restaurants and uh, malls. Uh, we are thriving today, right? 
I think in addition to what uh, Pushpa just said, I think for us going forward, right? Like she said, now that we are here, we are together, going forward, I think uh, combining the forces, A, uh, having a very clear roadmap going forward of what we want to ac accomplish and having a timely sort of uh, approach to it um, and addressing it cons uh, 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 together to the government and uh, internally within our own systems because obviously she has to deal with her platform of people. We all have our own uh, system to deal with. Uh, but consolidating that with the interest of not one, but the interest for all. I think when we represent it by saying this is not just in the interest of uh, uh, Kabir or Pushpa or Sir, it is the interest of the industry. I think that's when we will see outcome. Otherwise, everyone feels that there's an agenda. And I think uh, when you're able to showcase that your effort because this is a very thankless job. I, I speak for myself. Uh, it's a very lonely, it's not lonely, but it's very thankless, right? It's, and it's very time consuming, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, why should you do a thankless and time consuming job, right? But we do it with the, for the love of the industry. We do it for the love of what can happen and how we can make this industry grow and India grow. So if that's the spirit, then I think a lot can be achieved. Sure, sure. I think, I think great points. And, and, you know, Biju, what, apart from what has been said, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm understanding that there is advantages in this collab and what we look forward. Uh, you know, what do you see, you know, the growth potential overall from an employment perspective, you know, the, the use of technology, and like we were discussing, you, you all are one of the largest employment generators as well, uh, bringing in together you know, all that stuff. So what's your view of going forward and, and growth potential and, 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 and employability? Government is also talking about skilling and everything in, in their mind and most of the labor, what, what comes in here, a lot of, lot of them are unskilled or semi-skilled. So what's, what's your view overall, of, of, you know, from, from your perspective and, and your association? Um, I think if you really look at it, we are at the inflection point in terms of uh, the growth of the retail industry. You know, we have an economy which is about 3.8, 3.9 trillion dollars. We have a population which is about 1.4 uh, billion. Uh, a per capita currently is at hovering around 2,500, 2,600 dollars per head. So when you really think about it and you go back to maybe a country like China, very similar to us. Way back in 2006 or seven is when their per capita incomes were at this level. So we are about 15, 18 years behind China in terms of retail development. Maybe we need to think about $4,000 because between then and now, real value of money, you might have to think about $4,000. But the point at the end of the day is that in any industry, whether you look at retail space, retail retailers or retail industry, or even if you look at, say, for example, the food industry, food services industry, the level of organization is very low. A bulk of what happens in each one of these industries is in the unorganized sector. There are more retailers operating in retail spaces which are not in malls or in shopping areas. Uh, there are more people eating food outside of the organized food services chain. There are more people buying retail products outside of the organized retailers. So what it means is that if you want to actually capture share, uh, and when I say capture share, it happens at two ways. At one level is about doing things right to be able to grow respectively each of these industries. And at the second level, it is in that growth, take a larger share of it than what you currently have. And if you think about it from that perspective, there is a lot that we can do together. Uh, if you were to see it as that, then there is a trillion dollar retail market size today, which can actually go to $2 trillion in five years from now. 
But for that, we all have to work together and work very closely with the government. The unfortunate thing with urban development in India is that a lot more is driven by private than by public. If you think of all the new areas which are being developed, it is private developers who are developing new areas. It is not the government. So what happens is that they develop the area, then roads come after that. Then other facilities come after that. And consequently, when you think of planned integrated development, most developers have to do it themselves. So they build out residential, they build out commercial, they build out retail, and they build out hospitals and schools within their own townships. And then, you know, they have these tiny roads which lead to the township, which is supposed to be done by the government, which is perpetually jammed, or poor drainage, or something like that. So I think there is a need for all of us, one, to think about it from the perspective of where the potential for growth is, identify the common issues which are there, talk to the government saying that, you know, how can we actually work so that we think proactively about urban development rather than reactively, like the way we've been thinking in the past. So I think that's the best approach as far as this is concerned. If we do that well enough, and if you make life simple for the consumer, I'm sure consumption will increase. Sure, and, and just to pick from what you were saying, <clears throat> comparing with China. Do we have a Chinese model or China example of how this uh, 15, 18, 20, obviously they're working with government is either will be very tough or it will be very easy. But uh, is there a model which can be replicated ensuring that uh, A, associations are together, becoming an industry eventually, and is there any example or learning from there which can be brought in through, through associations of yours all together? Is there something which, which, which has seen? I, I, I'm Maybe I'll just add a few points on that. Um, I think what we clearly see is that in China, like in India, the level of urbanization is increasing. And today China is about a little over 50% urban, whereas in India we are about 35% urban. We all know that in urban markets, easier to distribute and retail than in rural markets. So that makes life a little simpler for China because they are more urban. However, in terms of the distribution of population, they have the same challenges that we have. And what they have done very clearly is built out different channels of sale. So if you look at online, Online today, China contributes to 50% of the online sales of the world. Okay, not even online in their market. In their own market, it's only 25% is online. But they contribute to 50% of the online sales of the world. Evolved markets like the United States are tottering at around 20%, despite having Amazon as a you know, home market. So what it means is that they have addressed distribution challenges, which is people need products, products not available locally. How do you make sure that you get it to them? The best way is that try and see how you can sell online. So some of the most evolved distribution channels happen in China. And there are some really incredible ways in which they are able to distribute, ranging up to cycles, okay? Then in terms of payments, they managed to lick this entire payment problem which we have also done to a large extent, but they managed to really get ahead in terms of payments. And today it's easy to, for me and Pushpa to sit next to each other and exchange payments without even looking at each other. You know, that's the level of uh, technology that they've managed to employ. Leave aside the fact that they've got a large number of brands, products, et cetera, et cetera, but those are some things that we can also do over a period of time. But these two areas is what they've used to be able to catapult growth in that industry. So if you look at the average consumption per individual in China, even on a PPP basis, they're about two and a half times what India consumes. On a total retail market basis, they're five times per capita of India. Yeah, yeah. So any, any thoughts on... Uh, so, um, you know, I have seen the ICSC Asia chapter uh, work very closely with the Chinese government or with the Thai government. And what 
it results in is that there is planned urban, you know, urban infrastructure is planned. So if there's a metro coming in, then the mall is connected to the metro. You see that in Bangkok. Here, it's only done when, say, a DLF has done a 50-50 partnership um, with the government and ensured that there is a rapid metro that will come into a future mall of India, Gurgaon. That's like, we're putting the money to ensure that it happens. Whereas over there, it is done through the association in a very planned, I always feel that if India is growing, it can't grow in just small pockets. It has to grow across the board. And for that, we need to identify urban pockets and not recreate the mistakes. You know, you can't keep repeating the same mistakes. So one needs to really look at how do we create these urban pockets, even if we are decentralizing congested cities, how do we make that into a more planned city or a planned sub-city? For that, it is important that, you know, we as a platform, if we create a platform and we are able to say, hey, we think that there are so many offices that are coming in here or residential is growing in this direction, why can't we plan an infrastructure, organize retail in this spot, but in a planned fashion? Then I think it makes sense. We will not be repeating the mistake. At the same time, be solving for uh, the congestion that is existing in our cities. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, uh, Kabir and, and your association has been asking for an industry status for long. And, and uniform regulation across states because each state has its own regulation. So, so give us a, some idea on what association has been doing and like we were discussing outside, a simple, uh, let's say, issue which came in of keeping retail 24 by 7. How do you see this can be managed and how all of you coming together uh, can make this happen. So first, you of what you are thinking from an industry, you are providing so many employments and everything, and, and then how we grow forward. You, you had an amazing story. <laughs> no, it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing. I think, you know, um, unfortunately, the F&B space, uh, for what it contributes to the Indian GDP, for the employment it provides, uh, it does not get the recognition it requires. Uh, we have to understand when tourists come into India, when you go into, for example, Thailand or any of the Asian countries or any country, uh, you, you make a checklist. These are the places I want to go, these are the places I want to eat. Eating is always part of, that, uh, uh, part of that holiday or part of the business trip, right? So food is a very important part of one's life. Uh, and countries um, have realized that and have accepted that and they promote that, right? Uh, and I think what we are saying is that as we are disjointed, right? Uh, a, we are typically a state subject, right? Uh, we have 29 licenses that we have to take. So every state has its own license Raj, as I call it. Some are uh, pan-India, but mostly all state subjects. Uh, the time frame to get licenses uh, uh, is not uniformed. The rule might say 45 days deemed approved, but deemed approved does not mean deemed approved, right? It says it on, on, on the fine print, but it does not mean that, right? So there are actual practical problems that need to be first solved. Uh, what we're talking over here is very macro, right? The vision is absolutely correct. But in order for us to fuel this, we also have to solve the micro stuff, right? Because each industry has micro problems. And I speak for the food space first. In our case, it's licenses. In our case, it's GST uh, not being, getting input, which in, for us is a massive problem, right? Uh, it, it reduces the scale at which we can grow. So for example, if I was able to grow with 100 rupees 10 stores, today I can grow eight because of not getting input. It, it, it increases your OPEX cost, it increases your CAPEX cost. So there's a lot of that that is also hurting the industry and the explosion that can happen, right, in regard to growth. Third is, um, when it comes to actual employment and other factors, uh, you know, we are actually upskilling uh, India. Uh, we take people that are completely unskilled, train them, teach them, grow them. I mean, I have 
instances where my dishwasher, who used to work with us 14 years ago, today is capable enough to run one restaurant as a head chef. We've made the effort to upskill him. So I think a lot of us in the industry are trying to upskill labor. We need to be recognized for it. We're adding to the GDP, we're adding to the per capita uh, contribution by doing that. So again, I think we all have roles to play and as leaders on the stage are trying to do our best. But I think we have to be able to engage with the government and have a person that can hear us. What happens is, if I have a tax, GST, if I have licensing, you have to deal with police separate, state subject, excise is separate. GST against state. If I'm dealing with, uh, like Pushpa said, if I have to deal with uh, which is the right location to sign into, I'd rather be in a situation where either it's the malls or it's independent markets. We have a, a roadmap. You have access to the right department. They basically give you a one window solution, which basically says you don't have to run around solving for all the licenses. Everything is solved. So for example, if DLF comes up with a, uh, a park, right, in Cyber Hub, and they have the 24 hour license, uh, 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 because they've done the required uh, procedures to get that, uh, uh, they have the ability to provide us uh, licenses uh, very, very smoothly, so it reduces the time of, uh, the loss of uh, uh, time of opening. It helps them start revenue generation, it helps us start revenue ge generation, helps us employ faster, so it's all interconnected. So I think, uh, like Pushpa said in the past, that if we have certain nerve centers across states and cities that are become like an SCZ, like you have the IT SCZs, that have uh, you know, if that can be provided, that could be a good start. And from there, we can build forward. If you can't do it for the entire city or state, at least start in one area. And let us learn from it. And let us, uh, you know, go through the cycle of understanding the issues, the pains, and solving it. Sure, I think, I think it's a good thought. And, and Pushpa, staying with the similar thought, uh, you know, the, the taste and preferences and everything of the consumer is changing. So how your association or SCI playing a role in ensuring product innovation and overall experience of the consumer? See, till now, um, this has been an individual mall effort, uh, looking at trend analysis, etc. But now what we are doing with SC, you know, Sky sure. is really coming up with a paper, a white paper, which gives trends. What we are also doing is we're conducting master classes. Um, you know, our uh, COO Anjeev is doing a good job in trying to con get the best in the industry to conduct master classes because how will we grow the industry if they go to tier two, tier three cities? How are the smaller developers uh, getting quality? Uh, that's only if there are, they are equipped with the right things. So we are conducting master classes at subsidized rates. There's okay. something that's happening for design, something that's happening for MEP, uh, law, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can only value add, you know, and sure. then we can provide information. Sure. Once these two are done, then it is up to the members, individual members of the association, to be able to encash on that and really uh, make sure that they are providing a quality product which exists in higher metros equally in the smaller towns. Sure. The other thing that I want to tell you is that, unfortunately, in this country, associations become relevant only during a crisis. Everyone comes around, and I can't tell you during COVID how much everyone said, oh my God, what do we do? What's the operating manual? So DLF, um, I mean, we had an operating manual. We said, hey, here is a manual take it, give it to everyone so that people get that information. The COVID protocols are in place. We just gave it out at that point. But unfortunately, unless and until there is a crisis, association relevance is very, very poor. And uh, that needs to change because if you look at China, if you look at Thailand, you know, the Siam family or the others, they are at the proponent um, in turn, they are the proponents of change. Correct. Associations have to be the proponents of change. Unfortunately, that's not the case here, unless we make a difference. Yeah, I think, I think that's why the, the whole discussion in is, is to ensure that we don't face another crisis to come together. 
and and biju staying with you you know uh, like pushpa said that now the way indian economy is growing and picking up from what you said uh, how do you see you know retail industry evolving in the tier 2 tier 3 cities as as we as we look ahead and how the these smaller cities do you think they will remain value conscious buyers or they would also evolve into more evolved consumer and more experienced consumer and and what others will do from your perspective to make sure that these these tier 2 tier 3 cities are also looked after you know there's a popular misconception that the money in india is in the large cities if you really go and uh, if you look at some of the statistics ahmednagar in maharashtra has the highest per capita mercedes benz ownership and who would have thought that ahmednagar will be that as opposed to say mumbai but that's a reality so there is a a lot of money in small town india unfortunately they don't have access to retail and a lot of that access to retail was actually created by e-commerce by online and when that happened what they discovered was that people were buying in small town india stuff that wasn't even being bought in some of the larger cities and during times of let's say downtrend in especially early days of covid what we all saw at that time was an upsurge in sales in small town india versus a decline in large india probably because of migration or whatever but nevertheless that looked very funny you know when you look at it from a statistics perspective so the challenges have always been how do you create quality retail one is infrastructure if you go in there saying i want to put up a 20000 square feet store you might discover that there is no building there which can get you 20000 square feet so obviously there is a need to develop retail infrastructure in small town india then once that gets created and that has to be in collaboration with retailers because very few developers will say i will take that punt and put in so much of an investment and then pray to god that some retailer will come there so a lot of retailers and retail developers have to work together to be able to drive that expansion the second part of it is to be able to create the right mix because when you think of small town india what you do realize it is even in terms of what they will buy frequently and where they will shop frequently will be in their traditional market so proximity of this to the traditional markets to where they stay is very important third there is a lot of two wheeler transportation versus a car transportation which you have in large town india so how do you then cater to two wheeler transportation because you know your shopping basket has to be smaller you know what they will buy what frequently all that has to be planned accordingly so it's not something that just putting up a retail outlet will make a difference you also have to think small town india in terms of what they buy which you will find pretty much surprising uh, but what frequency will they buy the variation between weekdays and weekends is quite significant in small town india shopping centers compared to the larger sound so even that has to be taken into account and then of course when you think of people imagine trying to get a store manager who lives in bombay to go and stay in a small town india saying you are a store manager there are migration challenges which are there which means you have to start taking people locally so there are several issues to be addressed but the point is that we are still 65% rural 35% urban and even in 35% urban the top 100 cities are only less than 18% the balance is still in the rest of the cities so there is a lot of opportunity sure i think uh i've been told time is up so uh, so before before we move ahead uh, any any wisdom from your end from an association perspective like we said uh, you know we you started uh, talking to each other more when the crisis came in but but any any two words from each one of you 
on, on your thoughts of how the association should move together and eventually reach to where we want to be? Um, I think uh, as an association, we are firmly committed in supporting our industry and our members. As an association, we believe that there are many things that need to be solved from the e-commerce policy to GST to various other elements that are uh, sort of restricting our uh, growth, if I may call it. And I think on a macro level, other than specific to our industry, but on a collaborative uh, uh, way of looking at it, I think the fact that we acknowledge the fact that we need to sit together and find the path forward, I think that in itself is a, is a good start. And I think, uh, like Pushpa and uh, Sir mentioned, that um, you ha we are all doing things already and we all have various other uh, various things that are already at play but once we combine all those things together we will realize that a lot has already been accomplished a lot is already in the pipeline and how to achieve what is uh, yet to be done is i think where the where the next uh, i would assume the next you know year will be spent so sure. I, I, that's how i would spend my time with these two uh, leaders on stage super Pushpa, your, your well, closing I thoughts. would just say engage more, um, exchange more information freely, and look at a collective um, way forward. Sure, sure. You know, I tend to echo what Pushpa said. I think uh, we need to meet more often. We all have a common objective, which is increase the consumption, retail consumption in this country, make sure that the organized market gets to become larger, and if we can all work together to be able to help build on that objective, it's a great thing to do. Sure. In that process, we also might need to engage with several stakeholders, whether it is government, non-government, whatever, but that is an essential part of our jobs. Sure. And if, and if the association needs any data, we are just a call away. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And at this point, we'd like to thank all of you. Please join us for a picture as we take a moment and uh, thank you for your very kind presence.